All right, thanks everyone. Uh, so strings is a is kind of a, a really awesome subject near and dear to my heart, uh, reg regular expressions. And John, I had to smile uh, with your uh, comment between the regular expressions, uh, regex, and then uh, adding the P into it. I do believe that they were crossing uh, party lines between the subject itself. So I did a, a control F throughout the whole uh, uh, presentation. I tried to remove anything that had uh, REG EXP uh, throughout. So let me share my screen and we'll get that going. This is going to be my Chrome and let's hit share. I don't think I'm gonna have to leave the uh, environment. So um, I don't have multiple screens here, unfortunately. And so therefore, let me close this out. I was typing to Lucy right before we joined here. Um, get out of here. Minimize that for just a brief moment. I wanna move that. Well, that'll work. Let's just put that by itself. Okay, so everyone, this is gonna be uh, everything about strings. And John was so kind to add uh, all of our learning objectives. There's quite a few here. Um, John, I'll do my best Ryan, to get. Um, I'm seeing your uh, mm -hmm. second Google. Um, oh, tabs. okay. Was it called when you have Linux on Windows 10? Yep. Okay. Which Let I me also change don't that know, real quick. Which is good to read that. Okay. <laughs> I was I was trying to look up what that term was. It's a it's a uh, Windows for subsystem yeah. Linux, and <laughs> I was uh, doing that for Lucy. Uh, let me try and stop sharing real quick, and then reshare the screen. Thank mm -hmm. you for noticing that. Yeah. No uh, problem. Let's try this again. Let's go share screen, and let's go with this one. There we go. Awesome. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my own. Now you should see chapter perfect. 14 yeah. strings. Okay, perfect. So John uh, put together a lot of learning objectives for us. John, thank you very much for listing all of those. Um, the, it's, it's quite a few and I'm gonna do my best to go through this material as, as briefly as possible. John, feel welcome to jump in or any of the team feel welcome to jump in with any questions. I, so the I first- I went, just before you go on, I, I, I went yeah. really fine grained on these. Um, yes partly just because I was kind of making an index for myself in a way. And Good. so, um, yeah, it's okay if we don't cover absolutely everything that's in this chapter. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I, well, I, I find that uh, it, it's good to cover the first uh, entry level details at the beginning of the chapter, and then literally just jump to the very bottom where it gets into the meat of actually using the string package uh, or string R package that seemed to be uh, worthwhile, but um, I'll see how this goes through and uh, we'll find out if we need to skip forward uh, into some more uh, detail. But the first learning objective we have is manipulating character vectors using the string R functions. And so the first topic we're talking about is called regular expressions and regex is a subject that is also used outside of R very heavily used in, in textual mining using Linux or using other, um, what do you wanna call them, open source tools. Uh, regex is, is kind of baked into um, almost a, a, I don't know, a magical art of, of being able to mine large quantities of information very quickly. Um, it's actually a advanced subject in most computer science classes um, because of such a very odd syntax. Uh, it's often based on Perl, and Perl is a really old language, uh, uh, or I guess it's it, it's in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, where Perl became such a, a big deal, uh, especially in the, the Unix environment. So um, regex is uh, uh, matching patterns in strings. So it's a very textual mining type operation in a more, uh, what's the uh, 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 tidy text mining? Uh, they, they deal with regex quite often. Um, and there's a book that uh, one of our, uh, our, our, our studio, uh, Julia, uh, Julie, uh, had released uh, an author for machine learning in this, and it deals a lot with regex in there as well. So this is a good subject to cover if you are wanting to get involved in Twitter um, sediment analysis or any sort of document text mining type operation. Regex uh, we're going to use for simple characters, and that's going to be the period and the backslash. Um, we can also use the caret, uh, the dollar sign, and the backslash B. Uh, these are called anchors and boundaries, and we're going to find out how you can deploy those when searching through textual mining operation. We also have a backslash D, backslash S, 
the square brackets and then the square brackets with caret, and this is called character classes. Uh, regex uh, also can be used for the pipe, uh, which is the single um, uh, vertical bar. Uh, some people will call it bar as well, and then parentheses, and we can use those for alternatives. What we'll find through this uh, uh, particular presentation is that you can find alternatives. You can pass that pipe and it'll say this or that, and it'll pull out anything that you're searching for. Finally, we also have some extra special characters, which is the uh, question mark, the plus sign, and the asterisk. We also have the curly bracket N, curly bracket N with uh, uh, comma, and then uh, comma with M. And what we're doing here is, um, sorry, I need to move that out of the way. Uh, this is called repetition. So you're looking for patterns within your text based on particular repetition of, of like characters. Again, we'll, we'll see some examples of how this is deployed. And then finally, using regex for grouping and back references to refer to previous uh, matches. Uh, John, if you don't mind, when we get to the section on back references, I'd like to expand on this subject. I found this to be very sort of confusing, but it mainly had to do with the syntax that R uses for those back references. Okay. When we get to the later part of this chapter, we will talk about uh, string R as a package. Uh, and there's two actually versions. There's string R and then string I. Um, there's going to be a point at the bottom uh, of this where you can change back and forth, but they're really the same package. One just extends into a more advanced form or, or it, it allows you um, a more complete set of all of these choices. One of the easiest and best ways that you can remember uh, string R as a service is everything starts with the str prefix, str underscore. Um, always re remember that your autocomplete or your uh, uh, the autocomplete feature of R uh, gives you access to all of those additional features. So we have our detect function, uh, we have subsets, uh, we have the string count, uh, string extract and string extract all, the uh, match and match all, there's a string replace and replace all you're seeing a pattern here, correct? Where you've got the first initial search term, and then we can say, show me everything. This is important to realize because initially it will only show you the first entry of a line. Whereas if you have extra additional features, you can say, show me everything. And then it'll iterate through uh, additional lines. Uh, we have our replace function and replace all splits and, and uh, using of the boundary and then string locate and string locate all. We also have matching rules to find specific patterns, uh, regex patterns with the uh, A pro, uh, propos, uh, and if I'm mispronouncing that term, let me know, and it's then also the directory. Apropos. Apropos, okay. Yep. And then finally, the, uh, the last section, and it's only a brief paragraph, talks the differences between the string R and the string I package. Okay, so let's continue on. I have a, a quick question, um, and not related directly to the regular expressions, but when you guys, you know, write our code, do you always put the package name and then the colon colon function? Um, I do that quite a bit. Um, okay. I, I always do it. So I always do it in things like these learning objectives, just so you know what it's referring to. Where does it come mm -hmm. from? And okay. then... I often do in my own code, number one, because I write packages a lot. And right. in a package, you need the package to know what it's referring to. Got it. I actually, I don't know. It's I'm weird, but I find it easier for code completion, for autocomplete, that I know it's a, a function from string R. So I can type string R, mm. colon, colon. And then you can be really fuzzy. I'm like, uh, it's extract. What is it? it it's oh, extracted. And yeah. it'll, R Studio will find the function within string R that has that in it. So okay. I'm weird. Like a lot of people don't do that. Um, but I, I find it really, um, I don't know, like, yes, it takes slightly longer to type, but it takes less time to think. And so I find it helpful personally. I see. Okay. Okay. That's a good point, Thank John. You. And I was just going to, I was just going to add to that statement. Uh, what you'll find often, Sandra, is that when you're using multiple packages, especially anything outside of Tidyverse, that you may have uh, the package itself and then some additional function within that package that may conflict. 
And so what you have to do is explicitly call out the package and then whatever function you want to call on. That way, uh, there's another way of getting around it. And John, if you don't re uh, remind me what exactly that's called, you can say use this particular package for this this call there's, throughout your whole script. There's a package um, conflicted that lets you set the default of which version of yeah. a function do you want to use. Um, but again, I don't use that very often because I just always explicitly say which right. package I want to use. Um, so yeah, you do get around some issues that way. And, and then the last one is when you're sharing code with someone else, mm -hmm. um, it makes sure that they have the right package. Like yeah. maybe yeah. you'll you have something that you just always library things that the you know maybe even outside of your script, and yeah. you can accidentally think that you've let people know about a, a package. Right. Um, whereas if you explicitly call it out, our studio says, hey, this package is called in this uh, script. Do you want to install it? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I just, um, it's, it is, I know it's weird. Like I know lots of people don't do it. And when I read other people's code, I actually find it really confusing because I'm like, wait, is that, where did that function come from? Is that base? Is that somewhere in some package? So Right, right. I find it really helpful, yeah. um, but I, okay. Okay. I read lots of other people's <laughs> code, and um, basically, no one who doesn't work for me <laughs> does it the way I do it. So, good point. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> okay, that that makes sense. Like I've started seeing some conflicts uh, later. Like oftentimes, it's the filter and lag. I yep. think it's either a deep liar and tidyverse or or something. Yeah. Um, but I thought that you could just library the package last that you want functions, right, to be called. Yes, or... but that's okay. easy to screw up. Yes, you yes, I, I agree. Okay, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. That's a great Thank question, you. Sandra. Yep. No problem. Yeah, I, I've just been wondering because I, I have been doing it a little bit more and I was just like, maybe I should just get into the habit. I don't, I, I don't think it hurts to get in that habit, but I will say... Um, I am I am weird in that. And okay, technically, if you're doing something that it's going to repeat a gazillion times, and um, speed like speed really matters. Um, technically, namespacing it like that adds a microsecond or something to the time for the function to execute, versus doing a library call once. Um, that has never actually come up as a thing that's worth optimizing for me. But, you know, if you're running something like literally billions of times, it might make a difference uh, okay. to just library once outside of the loop and then do the loop. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Good point. So the introduction of this, I said, this chapter is going to be wicked fun. Um, I made that statement myself. Um, I really enjoy regex. Uh, I look at the use of this as kind of a puzzle. Um, I don't know, I, I like word searches and, and Sudoku puzzles and that kind of stuff. So it may be just me personally, my opinion, but uh, I find regex as kind of a magical way of, of searching large quantities of text for one particular item. Um, regex make up the backbone of textual searches. Um, I says, but I can't just control F and search my document. Well, yes, you can still do that, but no, not technically, if you want to really be eloquent with your, your code base. Um, opening up a file, doing a control F, searching for something and then closing it, moving to the next iteration, it's very time consuming, where if you just use a regular expression, uh, especially with a directory call, you can literally search an entire library of, of all these text files looking for one uh, particular item. Um, there's a little bit of a, a extra nuance to that, but I, I won't get into that just yet. Uh, regular expressions can translate your search into computer code. So you can deploy a regular expression in a large uh, quorum or, or, or a corpus of, of material and then pull out only what is important that you're searching for. I do have a link for the string uh, string R package downside, and that's uh, going to allow for some extra additional reading if, if anybody's curious. And you can also use the string R cheat sheet, uh, cheat sheet. I felt that was important to also add into this uh, particular presentation. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is prerequisites. And obviously, string R is part of tidyverse uh, as a whole. That's this entire document that we're reviewing this book club. So we call on the tidyverse itself. And I just wanted to highlight that uh, currently it's package version 1.4.0. Um, if you continually call, just like John was mentioning, uh, with that uh, particular package itself, then you're always going to know that it will update uh, by by calling on it. It'll prompt you and say, do you want to update to the new version if CRAN has a release uh, or it has been modified? So just as a side note there. Okay. And continuing on. So we're going to get into the basics uh, first off. You can create strings with either single quotes uh, as a single tick mark, but don't use the word tick. It's actually just a single quote, um, or you can use double quotes. R doesn't really matter. I would only recommend that you choose one version and stick with it so that your code base is easier to review. Um, if you mix and match or start copying and pasting from others, uh, this can become a little bit of a hard read. Uh, so I always just stick with either single quotes or double quotes. R as an environment isn't going to matter. It'll, it'll interpret uh, the uh, points the same. Um, John, have you found any issues with that comment in other packages at all? Single versus double quotes? Uh, I haven't. I feel like people standardize slightly more on double quote. No. And so if you are just deciding what to standardize on, I would standardize on double. But it otherwise, I don't, I can't think of a case where it matters. Correct. And so I just, I put an extra bullet down here. I said, what, however, whichever you choose, just stick with it throughout your script. Uh, and that kind of uh, runs a lot of our, our scripting uh, utilities. It always just says, choose one form and then stick with it. If you want to use the pipe, use the pipe throughout your whole uh, point. If you want to stick with more base R, that's fine too. Uh, just don't mix and match because it'll, it'll make your code really hard to, to uh, debug. So we run this first particular string and uh, we create a, an object uh, passing a, a point that says, this is uh, also a string that uses single quotes. And then the second one is this is a string with double quotes. When it points that, or sorry, prints that to the screen, we'll see that we have double quotes. This is a string, but I forgot to close the quote uh, and then help, I'm stuck. Um, I have to hit the escape key to get out of this. This is a very, very early issue that we have with scripting in general is users won't close quotes. And so the interpreter will automatically render, but then get stuck inside itself. Um, this is always very, very, very simple. And the, the way you always remember that is you'll see it with a plus sign next to it because it's expecting the user to enter more data and then close the quote before it executes the, uh, the search term. So if you ever find yourself in this uh, loophole, just hit your escape key and it'll, it'll bump you back out. Uh, I need to move this out of the way. Let's see if I can just close that and get it over here. Um, nope, nope, nope. I had a little bit more on that page. Sorry, team. Okay. Okay, one of the more tricky things to remember when using regular expressions is the backslash. Now, the backslash is an escape character um, when you literally want to use a special character in the search. So for example, if I wanted to search for something that had a double quote, I would have to backslash out of it. The same thing with a single quote. And what you're doing is the regex form of, of search term backslash escapes that particular character and treats it as text instead. So instead of being a regular expression of special character, it now becomes part of the search term. So we'll find this uh, more important if you're looking for things with asterisks, look, looking for things with question marks, uh, square brackets, parentheses, that uh, point. You've got to be able to escape or backslash out of that. Now, where this becomes such a big problem is because how many backslashes do you have? In the, in the document or in the chapter at the very beginning, it says uh, you'll start to imagine that a black cat has walked across your screen, uh, walked across your keyboard. Um, that's supposed to be a taboo kind of bad luck sort of scenario because the text is so foreign. Well, what you're doing is you're actually backslashing out of some characters. So it does make a little bit difficult to read regular expressions when you are looking at it at a forum page. Um, as an example, I printed out the single quote section um, so the script above, as we're reading it, we create the objects, double quote and single quote, and then we print out double quote. Well, what ends up showing on the screen is that backslash. 
to get around that, we have to use an explicit right lines double quote. And what that does is now just provides us that double quote uh, as, a, as an entry. Um, John, do you wanna expand on this particular subject? That right lines is, uh, is uh, telling the uh, standout or the interpreter to, to print it to the screen as it was intended. Uh, not, I don't really have any further thoughts okay. on that. I, I, I guess one thing is I tend to use cat rather than right lines, okay. which does, I think, almost the same thing. And it's okay. slightly faster to type. <laughs> that's Good point. It. <laughs> um, cat stands for concatenation. And yep. it's almost like you're, you're reading or interpreting the text file or the variable directly. Uh, so cat just touches that particular uh, point and prints it to the screen. Good point, sir. I'm sorry, I think um, I just got confused. So all right. you want to print that backslash or use it as an escape character? I'm sorry, Ryan, yeah. Um, That's okay. This particular section or this first entry level of regular expressions, when we are accessing yeah. your R environment and executing code, it's treating the backslash as a as a character, but if you want to treat it as a regular expression, meaning a, an escape character from some special term that you're searching for, you need to to be able to escape out of that. So you want to cat or or write lines, then able to treat it as a regular expression. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Scroll past all this. Um, the comment says there's a handful of other special characters. The most common are the backslash N and backslash T. This stands for new line and tab. You'll see this a lot in markdown documents. If you want to force the system to create a new line or force the system to, to tab in, um, you can add those extra special characters in there. When the uh, markdown document or you're rendering it or using regular expressions in this case, um, those are also special as well. And so you'd have to backslash out of those uh, if you are searching for them. Um, we can see in this list uh, that the uh, question mark, uh, single quote and question mark, double, sorry, question mark, sing, double quote, question mark, single quote. You can also sometimes see these strings like the uh, Unicode, uh, which is this particular one happens to be the micro character. Um, it's a reverse U, uh, but it stands for a Greek letter micro. Um, I wanted to add more to this uh, subject by using also emojis. Um, if you didn't realize Unicode is, is a more universal way, it has a larger library of access. So if you know the Unicode that you're searching for, you can also deploy that as well. I don't know if any other user is probably familiar with using Unicode uh, other than just doing HTML uh, or, or uh, textual mining type services. Um, if I wanted to search a document with that has a thumbs up icon, I could just pass a Unicode variable because that's actually what it's looking for. I did add a link to the Unicode library. Um, I couldn't, I went to the unicode.org site. Um, I didn't find the library accessible. So I, this link actually goes to Wikipedia. Uh, I found its library a little bit easier to follow. I said, note, the list is quite extensive. Unicode is, is used for non-English characters, or um, if we think in a global environment, uh, different languages use different uh, uh, semantics, different characters to, to represent a language. And so therefore, if you deploy Unicode, it makes things a little bit simpler because you're explicitly asking for what you're searching for. Note the list is quite extensive. Currently it's listed at approximately 144,000 uh, entries. A better way to start the uh, comment is Unicode is intended to represent the world's diverse linguistic and lexiconal uh, attributes. Um, if you wanted to get into some Sanskrit or some Russian uh, uh, type search terms, Turkish is uh, uh, one of the locales that we'll use here in a moment. Okay, so let's just create a string real quick. Uh, we're going to combine uh, three points, one, two, and three, and then print them out to the screen. What is special about this is because it's treating it as three different entries, but it's its own kind of separate tibble but I don't wanna say that necessarily because it's, it's actually a vector of, of uh, characters. Uh, we've got three vectors here, one, two, and three, each one of them having different attributes. Okay. So the string length uh, argument is the, the next section that we'll use or the next function that we'll use. Before you go on to that. Um, go ahead, sir. So they don't have this in the book because it came out in R4, but there okay. is, I'm pasting into the chat 
there's now this um, string literal where you say R and then a quote, a double quote and parentheses. And anything inside of that parentheses is interp interpreted literally. So you can put slashes, you can put quotes, you can put single okay. quotes, whatever you want. And you don't have to do all the escaping. So if you have text that has a ton of escaped characters in it, this is a much easier way to work with it. I still don't have this like internalized. So I had to, I was zoning out for a little minute or for a minute there because I had to go look it up and make sure I was doing it right. Um, but I think it is like, I have many times reverted to using this because it's so much easier to type like well, you don't have to you don't get lost in the slashes and it's actually as we get into the regex stuff um it's really useful to have this available because if you're trying to include a slash in regex it's like super confusing what you're typing in r because you have to like have four slashes to get yeah. one slash or you know one literal slash um so this because this is helpful uh and it's just so there are lots of nuances on it like you can i think you can use a single quote and you can use brackets and curly braces as long as they match at the end so you, see. you see it, it's r and then a quote character and then you know parentheses like character a bracket of some sort and then you just end it the same way well right. i think that that really uh, drives it home the the confusion of of just using different uh, yeah. regex type libraries or or uh, <laughs> what do you, not not libraries that's not the right word it's the it's the script itself or the 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 way you write the script by making things a little bit simpler and easier it is uh, it's not removing the uh, core or the base of of you know where it came from um, in kind of a Linuxy type world. Perl, you know, uh, using sed and awk are very common to, to yeah. search for terms, right? Grab sed and awk. We, we don't use those heavily within R because the environment provides packages for us to search those terms uh, directly. Um, you're not out in the wild, I guess. So that's a good that's a good comment. I didn't realize that that was available in the uh, newer versions of our studio. And yeah, it was specifically R, R. Yeah, R 4.0, I think, is when they added it. Um, so it doesn't work with, you know, older, if someone has an older version of R, it won't work. Um, but, you know, if you're working for yourself and you're using uh, recent versions of R, it's it's a very helpful way to type, just to very type cool. things nicer. Um, and then, like, if you really want, you can just type it that way and then print it and it'll show all the escaping in the thing that you print. Oh, okay. And then so it'll, can... it'll create, yeah. So then you could just copy paste that to uh -huh. if someone is using an older version of R, for example. Um, or even <laughs> even if you're learning, you're, you're while you're learning right. the, yeah. the nuances of it, that's an easier way for it to, to write the, the longer version. Right. Um, cool. So yeah, that's it's, I don't know, most of the time it's not worth remembering how it comes up and that's why I had to go look it up. But every once in a while I'm writing, you know, like I'll be writing something that is um, giving examples of escaped characters. <laughs> and so it has yeah, tons yeah. of escaped characters in it and it's a pain to deal with. Um, I was thinking HTML. Uh, HTML is always really hard to, oh, uh, to search for. Yeah, that that too. Um, I've, I've separately been dealing with that where um, I was trying to get everything into Unicode. So including if in HTML it had the HTML escapes, I just discovered the... Um, text utils package will take the gotcha. escaped HTML and convert it to Unicode. And so I could have everything in the same, you know, so like I had some code where some, or some strings where some people typed um, the Delta character and some people had ampersand Delta semicolon, which is the HTML escape for Delta. And I wanted to merge them, you know, I wanted them to be the same thing. And so this text utils package um, takes any of those HTML uh, encoded characters and just makes them the raw character. Um, I don't, I don't know how many of our book club members probably get involved in that <laughs> at all, but I, I 100% uh, empathize with with being able to search that kind of quantity or that 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 type of, of especially it funny when having like the text had a mix. Some things were HTML encoded, some things were not, and then it becomes a pain of 
well, and like, you know, it had non-breaking spaces was the one that yeah. really caught me. And I'm doing some um, natural language processing on it. And so that was getting tokenized as yeah. an ampersand and then NB, SP, and then a semicolon, like this big yeah. string of things. It's just a space. And so, um, wow. yeah. <laughs> so text utils is an, an extra package if you need to do. I'll with add text. that into the, I'll add that into the bat belt for yeah. sure. Okay, um, I, I have a question. So what does yes. escaped character mm -hmm. mean? Uh, yeah. So the slash is the escape. So if yeah. I type this, which I just put in chat, that is an escaped quotation mark. Meaning it doesn't get treated as? Exactly. Yes. Right. So like if I type literally this into R, that second quotation mark displays as a quotation mark. Like it... It's literally a quotation mark. It doesn't get parsed and used for interpreting of the text. Mm -hmm. Versus if I typed oh, okay. that, that is an open parenthesis, or I mean an open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and then another open quotation mark, and it'll usually cause bugs. Do you see, see the well, difference? Yeah. Sandra, okay. if I can ex I can expand into the subject. When we look at the sheer volume of data that is produced by mm -hmm. multiple applications, right? Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, different browsers of HTML, different uh, uh, JavaScript libraries, different uh, PDFs, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, et cetera. When you look at the sheer volume of the utilities that generate particular code at the end of the day, if you just boil it down to the protocol, then you're looking for you know, a particular special character or a particular uh, uh, sequence of events. It doesn't matter what utility generated it by being able to boil it down into regex, you can build a formula that would still search through that media type. And I guess that's the power of what regex is special is because it doesn't matter what generated, you're still able to search it or still able to utilize whatever data is coming at you. Okay, okay. I think that um, I was just maybe confused about why it was called an escape care. So the only time I've used yeah. that backslash is on, I'm probably going to get this wrong, it's bash. And it's yep. essentially for creating new lines between parameters. Yep. And so that, so the only way that I understood is, is when you put that backslash at the end, the return is ignored, right? So that, because um, normally you could just list a, a really long line of parameters, yeah. right? Like a flag and then whatever thing it is that you want. But it gets very difficult to read when it's all <laughs> like that. So to separate parameters with a return, then normally we remain, we put that backslash so that you can have a return after that, but so that the program still finds the next parameter. And so I, I was just trying to understand, you know, in the context of mm -hmm. something like this, like. Um, yeah, it's escaped um, from the quotation mark, basically. It's it's escaped from being treated as um, as a special character anymore. So for the, the like most basic escape or character that you need to escape is the backslash because you use the backslash to escape other characters. And mm -hmm. so that's that last thing I put in chat. If you want a literal backslash, you have to type backslash backslash um, because the first backslash is saying this next character you need to treat as the literal character. And then the second one is the literal character that you want. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. So in your, in your last example, there's a quote, two backslashes and the close quotes, right? Right. So, so then... Um, so if I didn't have... Okay. If I didn't have the first backslash, uh -huh. copy and paste this... Yeah. The second quote gets escaped. And so my quote isn't finished. My string oh. is still open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you need the second backslash, which is the actual backslash. You know, the first backslash is saying, okay, the next thing I do is going to be special. And okay. um, it can be, um, as we were looking at it, it can be like special Unicode characters, or mm -hmm. it can be... Um, I want a literal uh, quotation mark or a literal backslash. Um, there you can do, so let's see. Uh, let me share this, Oops, type, type faster, John. <laughs> okay, 
So this is hard to actually see, but another, oh, actually, let me do this, this tab. All right. Um, another example of a slash character is slash T is a tab yep. or oh, okay. slash N is new line. And so, oops. And so it's um, like the slash always means something special is coming. And okay. um, let me see if I can get one. Yeah, there we go. Um, if oh. you don't escape the slash, like again, if I wanted a, a literal backslash, it always looks at the next character as being something that the slash is going to make special. And so yeah. it's saying slash s, what the heck does slash s mean? Whereas I just wanted the slash. So that's where you need Got to it. Escape okay. The Thank slash. you so much. Yep. Yeah. Sorry for yeah. taking your time, Ryan. No, no that's that, okay. And that is one of those terms that once like you work with it, it's like, oh yeah, you just escape it. And then like obviously it doesn't actually mean anything. Like it, it's not obvious what that means until you've worked with it. So thank yep. you for asking. <laughs> no, this is a really good no, Sandra. I can't I can't express the uh, awesomeness of asking that question because it is at the core of the magic of what regex implies. <laughs> John, if you uh, it's I think it's regex.org, I believe is a way that you can test your code. Like you you'd have to have some media that you would want to search. But there's a there is a utility that helps you build regular expressions to deploy in a in a in an environment. Um, so, I wouldn't recommend using it with string R, but um, or in R period, but I, um, I think I've hyperlinked it, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so the one that I use, I just put in the chat is okay. um, uh, regexter.com. And by the way, um, I used to pronounce it regex, but my uh, spouse programs in Perl and she says oh. regex. And I figure if she programs in Perl and says regex, that must be the correct way to do it because that's where it comes I'll, from. I'll, <laughs> I'll change my vocabulary. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, yes. So the first time that we get to actually start using the string package in this particular chapter is talking about the string length. And this is really neat because it, it, it actually counts the characters within the quoted uh, points. And then obviously uh, also handles NA variables, which uh, are NA values, which also is very problematic in a statistician type form. But the uh, use of string underscore length, we're passing a uh, combined uh, point of A as a single uh, single character, uh, a sentence, R for data science, and then another value of NA. When we run this string length, it's going to give us an output of one character, 18 characters, and then NA as well. Now, you have to remember that even a space inside that quoted mark is going to be a character. So when you count that up, starting at the letter capital R all the way through uh, the E at the end of science, that's actually counting up a total of 18 characters. Okay. The other point, and I brought this image in from the, the GitHub uh, source of the chapter, uh, is the um, autocomplete. And I found this very valuable uh, when you're choosing what particular function to call within the string package a string R package, you can just uh, type in the str underscore and then let it autocomplete with whatever you're choosing or you have some options to, to select from here. Okay. It's funny, you can um, roughly determine when this is from because that screenshot doesn't have the function string ends, str underscore ends. Oh, really? Uh, which uh, I actually wrote that function at Tidyverse Dev Day at R Studio 20. 18. So ah, this is from before 2018. Old. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it, it, this is the same image from the GitHub. And, and if anybody actually goes to the source GitHub site of this chapter of R for DS, um, it's actually way different. There's a whole different nuance to it. So that tells me they haven't recompiled the book down or, or posted it to the website either. So John, that's a good topic. Um, some of the material may be dated, uh, what we're seeing uh, in the book down version versus the source of GitHub. So, 
I actually made a branch from that. I said, I'm not going to use the GitHub site for any of this because it is confusing. It doesn't actually flow uh, the same way. They actually pull in the baby names package and start using some string functions in there. And I'm like, I'm not gonna get confused here. I'll just stick with the book instead. Um, when we talk about combining strings, we use the underscore C. Uh, C stands for combine. So the first uh, point or object we're creating, string C, and then we're passing both X and Y as characters. Notice that there is a comma separating the two uh, points, and that's why I use the term tibble, but it's not really a tibble, it's actually just a list of characters. So when we print out that function, we remove that uh, uh, comma, and now it's just X, Y. It actually combines those two into one string. This is very important to comprehend what's going on here with this combined function. So if I pass X, Y, and Z, well, it's going to combine those characters together. And so now I have a string of X, Y, Z. If I did a count on that, I would come back with three. There's three characters in that string. Okay. You can also add the separator argument. And what the separator argument does is actually put a valued separator back into the string itself. So if I'm using a combined function X and Y, and then I include the separator comma, when I produce the string, it's going to be X comma space and then Y. Again, just to reiterate, if I did a string length on this uh, uh, point, it would be a total of four characters because the comma is a special or the comma is a character and the space is a character as well. All right. Like many other R functions, we always run into missing data or NA, not applicable or not appropriate, not, not available, um, however term you want to use for NA. But if I use a, if I call out an object and then I combine it with ABC comma NA, if I do a string combine and then add the uh, pipe hyphen X and then pipe hyphen to close it, well, it's going to combine those together. So I've got one string a variable, and then another string. When this generates or, or prints out to the screen, I'm going to have pipe hyphen ABC hyphen pipe, and then NA as the last variable, or the last value, I guess. Now, we can also do a string replace. And this is special in the sense that it's handling that NA value with, or, uh, yeah, value within that object. So I'm going to run the same text over again by adding in this string replace NA function inside this combined function, what we end up getting is a, it treats the NA as a character. And there's gonna be an exercise here in a moment where it talks about the base R version of using uh, string manipulation versus the string R package. Uh, there is a difference on how it handles NA uh, values. Uh, as shown above, the string combine is a vectorized, it automatically recycles shorter vectors uh, to be the same length as the longest. This was kind of tricky for me. And John, I actually changed some of this code base trying to play around with this and then erased it and left it as what it was in the text. I couldn't get it. I wanted to, to make it uh, add a new line into the text, uh, but I wasn't able to uh, uh, escape the new line in the string. Uh, so it didn't work the way I wanted it to. What we have here is prefix as the first part of the string, and then we add another combination of ABC, and then we close out the suffix. I put a note to myself here because this is almost like a for loop inside a for loop. As it iterates, it's going to take one value, add another value, and then uh, finish it off before it starts the new text. That's why I was trying to create it as, as three different lines of text to show you that it was iterating through. What happens is that we create a first string of prefix and then inside is the, the first entry of our second combine here. And then it closes with suffix. It starts the process over again with prefix B and then suffix prefix C and then suffix. It's like having two embedded for loops. I said, I don't know if the word recycle in this paragraph is accurate, uh, or maybe it's not the right use of the term uh, in its, in its uh, place. So I wanted to add that in there. If anybody else is more in a computer science-y mindset, um, that's kind of what it's doing. All right. Um, we have objects of length zero are silently dropped. So string R is- so I want to- now, I do want to yeah. pause for a second. I just needed to finish um, making yeah, sure that it worked ahead, that sir. way. So to show um, 
What they mean by recycled is that you know it, it gets repeated the number of okay. times that the longest one is. And okay. so I typed in this where I, I, I moved the dashes into a SEP argument just because I wanted to make sure that that worked how I thought it worked. Um, okay. But so otherwise, this is exactly the same as the code you had. Like the rep doesn't really do anything. I see. Because it's automatically adding that repeat into the, the processing because it needs to repeat the first one and the last one to okay. match. And so go ahead and you know copy paste that, that this ends up being the same thing because it needs more copies of prefix and suffix to match with the long ABC. I see. So it's effectively treating it as if there are three of them. Oh, okay. So I, I maybe I misinterpreted it. So this first section is your longest string then, right? And that the this is the shorter of the two. I'm sorry, I, I'm not looking at your screen. Oh, uh, forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, the ABC is the longest vector. Uh, okay. So I misinterpreted that then. Yeah. So it, yeah, it re recycles everything to be length three. And I guess um, one last one to drive this home is if I did, let's do prefix, other, other. Okay. And so if I do this, where my first one is also length three, notice that only suffix gets repeated. Okay. Um, so it's it doesn't change the you know the the two that are length three it's just taking the first value the second value the third value but then the okay. the third one it's taking that one value over and over and I think let me do one last test I'm pretty sure it's going to yell at me yeah um, if they aren't uh, cleanly duplicated. Um, it errors that so if I have two things in one one of the strings and three in another, it's like I can't I can't deal with that. Yeah. Um, some uh, base R will recycle the first one. It'll go prefix other prefix because it just repeats it. How like if it needs to repeat it one and a half times, it's okay with that. And string R is uh, picky that it needs to match because probably you made a mistake if you did yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So that's that kind of sense. the philosophy on Stringer is to um, be noisy when it thinks that you screwed something up. I see. So. I did find the second part of the uh, example of, of using the combined feature. It made a reference to using an if statement inside the, the combined function. And what I what I wanted to change or modify this, it, it previously it had Hadley's name in there. Um, <laughs> I replaced it with my own. But what I what I made a comment towards is I said that's not actually going to ever be true because we're we're calling birthday false as the as the object birthday. It's always going to be false. Right. It's never going to be true. So what I wanted to do is is change the birthday to be the system date. And so when I when I pass the variable birthday, it's going to look at my system environment, give me the date, and if it matches true, then it will say, you know, happy birthday. I just wanted to add that in there if anybody noticed that uh, particular syntax. Okay. Um, uh, the the rest of the combine section uh, it uses another argument called collapse. Um, so instead of a separator, uh, collapse acts a little bit differently. Um, if we look at how uh, the collapse feature works um, as compared to the separator, when I combine a combination of X, Y, and Z, uh, it'll actually print out three different values as one character apiece, X, Y, and Z. Now, adding in the collapse feature is going to print out something similar so what I wanted to make sure our team wasn't uh, confusing is the difference between what a separator does versus what the collapse feature does. That's going to be another uh, exercise question here in a moment. Um, 
ultimately collapses at the end, or it's it's combining all of the strings together by adding in that uh, particular point. Um, it's 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 being able to manage multiple combinations of of uh, text. All right. Um, at this next juncture, uh, John, do you want to continue going literal through oh. the chapter, or should we jump forward to? I the actual I just noticed the time um, methods. So um, it's up to you, but like you know, try to get to a stopping point in the next five minutes. Okay. Whichever way you want to do that. <laughs> well, let me let me match or let me let me go through the actual regular expression topic uh, of these different matching patterns. This will me mean more to the team. Uh, the last section with tools and other search terms is just adding more flavor to what you're doing. What I wanted to uh, close out this chapter with, though, is if you do run the string uh, view option, it is going to uh, uh, paint out this uh, white on white text. I found it hard to uh, to render. It wasn't until you created the book down that or the the, the R markdown into HTML where uh, you got to see the output. Um, if anybody wants to uh, do a pull request, not pull request, if they want to update, uh, I did submit this chapter to our R4DS book club. Uh, John, if you accept that, it will make it available for everybody. But There's, uh, uh, there is a comment. I can't remember what. Um, okay. There are some things to, to tweak before we merge Okay, in. good, sir. All mm -hmm. right. The, uh, within this particular text team, what we're doing is creating a variable X, passing in a combination of apples, bananas, and pears. With the string view function, I'm passing that very that object X, and I'm searching for anything that says A N. As it generates out, the string view will create this white on white text, or if you render it in HTML, it's easier to see. But we're only highlighting the first A N. Now this is important because it doesn't iterate through every instance. Because if you notice right after, there's another A N. Okay, it only hits the first point of that. If I did a string view all, then it would iterate through all instances. The final thing that I'll, I'll just cover here is I just, using. One quick thing. Uh, I don't get the white on white. So that's you a, yeah, that's a. That could be me in my environment something. then, yeah. Yeah. That's probably my theme then. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, what, I, what I wanted to, to show is the use of a period or a dot, if you want to call it that too. Um, so in this point, we're passing a dot, a dot. So the search pattern is using a special character, the period, the dot. And so it's going to show anything that starts before. So here I've got B, A, N, and then the other one is E, A, R. So it's anything before and anything after. I'm searching for the character N, give me anything before and give me anything after. The reason that Apple doesn't register as a point is because there's nothing before the letter A. So the uh, logic of how the regex is rendering says there's nothing before the letter A, so therefore it doesn't match my argument. Whereas B, A, N, and, and E, A, R does match the search term. Uh, John, I think the rest of this is just going to be talking about different pattern searches, but it is important uh, because we do talk about the four escape characters. Um, that is a section. Uh, I said, good, we figured out how to use the period, but using escape character. Okay, but what if we wanted to search for the escape character? Hmm, we need to escape the escape. Uh, that's actually just kind of a joke. I made a, a funny, or I was trying to make a funny there. <laughs> um, therefore, we need four backslashes to be able to escape the escape. And yeah, this is where that... Um string literal stuff that I showed earlier can be useful yeah. if you're trying to search for backslashes or um, things like that. So, yeah. all right. Um, yeah, I think let's go ahead and, and stop here. We'll continue within the all the regex um, rules there. They are a thing that it's good to have seen. I don't think you should like feel like you have to internalize all this the first time you read this chapter but you know where to look for the rules once you've had the chapter and any time, you know, the more you use it, the more you'll get familiar with it. Um, but yeah, we'll pick up there next week. 
um, which is good because I've got a busy week and now I don't have to write new learning objectives. So, all right. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, very, very good. I will see everyone next week. So, bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.